All right, everybody, I'd like to pass your attention over to our judge, IPB Pro, Chris Dim. Please give him your undivided attention. Thank you very much. Welcome, Chris. Great crowd. Give, 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 give it a hand to Dan for uh, putting this thing together. So I'm going to give you guys a little bit about my story, so that way, you know, hopefully you can uh, leave and get something out of it, um, you know, and basically get yourself a little motivated, pumped up, whatever, you, whatever it is. But uh, it goes back to my story of, of uh, basically being a 98-pound wrestler in high school. And um, I was a 98-pound wrestler, and I wanted to be a bodybuilder. So everyone laughed at me because you could cap bones coming off of my side. And... Um, when I told people I wanted to be a bodybuilder, they said they've never seen an Asian bodybuilder in their whole entire life. How is that even going to be possible? Especially you, you're being so, uh, so small compared to the rest of the guys. And um, it was a journey. I can honestly tell you that. It was uh, 16 years, 16 years before I got my pro card. And within that 16 years, I didn't really care about the naysayer. Have you guys ever seen a picture of... Uh, in the mirror, and you, a, a cat looking in, seeing himself as a lion. Have you ever seen that? That, that was me. That was, that was the, the little, little skinny cat. And uh, I would be in front of the mirrors, you know, flexing. Imagine this little, little Asian skinny kid hitting the mirror, posing. And that was me. And um, by the time 2002 came along, I took, uh, I won the Miss USA show. Uh, in the light heavyweight class, everyone tipped off the scale at 198, and I, I only weighed 186 for that show. And uh, I won that show, but I didn't win the overall. And then I won the Nash, uh, then I, I won, I took second at the National. So that year, 2002, I took uh, second, well, first at the USA, didn't get my pro card, did the National, took second. The following year, 2003, Three, I came in and um, I took second at the USA, but then I ended up winning the national show that year. Four months later, I decided to do my first pro show. Remember, back then, they didn't have a 212 class. They didn't have any of those. It was strictly just the freaker nature. And uh, here I am getting on stage, and I was always the lightest guy on stage. And uh, I remember seeing all the guys in the magazine here I'm getting on stage with them at the San Francisco Pro Invitation 2004. Well, I wasn't even in the first call out because they weren't even expecting me in the first call out. And then I, I fought my way through and then when they called me back up there again, I was in the top five. I couldn't believe it because I, I was beating guys like Gustavo Bedell, uh, David Henry, Chris Colmier, all the guys that I looked up to pretty much. And uh, that year, I took third, and I qualified for the, the, my first Mr. Olympia. The story is, it took me 16 years. How many people would have already given up? Be honest. Well, sometime the journey might take a lot longer to get to where you need to get to, but the success might come quick. What I mean by that is that that year, my first pro show, qualifying for the Mr. Olympia right off the bat. And, um, you know, it, 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 was, it was a shock. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that here I am, a skinny Asian guy, a 98-pound kid who really didn't care about the naysayer and decided to basically come in and just focus on me. I focused on me. I didn't care about anybody else. Some of you guys have naysayers. And, but the biggest thing that I can tell you is that don't worry about anybody else. Worry about your own journey. Go where you need to go to and focus on where you need to get to because at the end of the day, it's you versus you. Um, even though I'm getting on stage and competing with all these guys and it took me 16 years, um, I was competing with myself every single year to get better and better and better and better. That's all I focused on. So I competed at the Mr. Olympia that year and then um, right after, 
we did what we call the European tour. So the European tour is three different countries and three different days. Friday was, was Russia, Saturday was uh, Holland, and then England was Sunday. So we competed in three different days, three different countries, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, I was, they flew me in that night, and you know, um, flying to Russia, taking you 30, 38 hours, your body's gonna hold water. Um, but I got tighter and tighter and tighter. So by the time I competed in England, um, I was beating guys like Marcus Rue. Who's ever heard of Marcus Rue? Yeah, freaking nature, right? So that year, it was Ronnie Coleman, who outweighed me by 100 pounds. I, I saw him step on the scale, and he was 302. I was afraid to step on the scale after that. I came in at like 202, <laughs> so he outweighed me by 100 pounds. And then a Chris Cormier took second, and I took third. Qualified for another Mr. Olympia. So we did the Olympia again, so for the second time. And in 2007, I was training my clients, and I felt a 1,000 pound on my chest. I just felt something super, super heavy in my chest, and I dropped. And all I did was I told my, my clients to call the ambulance. Um, they called the ambulance and took me in. I had an aorta dissection, which is 99% of the people don't live through it. That's what Einstein died from. Uh, Lucia Ball, if you guys, I'm kind of showing you my age. But um, there's just a lot of, you can't tell what it is or what uh, dissection is. Because a lot of the time we think it's the heart. It's not the heart. It's the main artery that's connected to the heart. That's what burst. And uh, mine, mine burst. And I was able to slow my breathing down, and, and, I, and, and I got taken to the ambulance. And uh, I remember that they gave me a 10% chance to live. They weren't sure I was going to wake up. And if I was, they said I was going to wake up with dam uh, brain damage or brain damage and paralysis put together. Miraculously, walking to point A to point B, I was out of breath. Getting on a treadmill, I was out of breath. Um, I started walking, then I started being able to jog, picking up a three pound weight, a five pound weight. Next thing you know, muscle memory, six months later, I, I, I got everything back again. And uh, I decided, I didn't want to end my career that way. I said, you know what, I'm gonna come back and do another show. Everyone thought I was crazy. They're like, what, what is Dim doing to himself? So I decided to come back in 2009 and they saw my name on the roster, they, 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 they didn't know what, what I was doing. And then when I stepped on stage, all of a sudden, oh damn, Dim look good. Took top three again, qualified for my third Mr. Olympia. And so that was 2009, and then um, they looked, they did a CT scan and found the rest of my door was starting to expand also. So we went in and did a second split. So they split me again from my chest the second time, uh, took care of the second part of the aorta. And right about 2010, they said that there's the last portion of the aorta that needed to get fixed. And they, so the second doctor said, don't let them do the stent. If you have them do the stent, it's not gonna hold up. You have to have them do a full cut. Well. I talked him to letting me do the stent. So what happened was I went in, back in, they did the stent. In 2012, I, I, I knew something was going on. I was sweating really bad. I was having chest pain. Um, so I decided to drive myself to the, to the hospital. I went to the first hospital and, and I said, you know what, if something major is gonna happen, I'm gonna die here, because they didn't have a good cardiologist. So I drove myself to the second hospital and I went in, and my blood pressure is 240 over 180. You're talking about hypertension, heart attack, you name it. And uh, they rushed me in really quick. And all I remember was waking up, and I was in an ice suit. I was freezing. And I didn't know what they were doing at the time. After two days in, in this ice suit, uh, freezing, I said, please take it off, please take it off. So they finally took it off. 
And then the doctor came in. He says, Chris, there's a chance you'll never walk again. You have a spinal cord injury. And so at that moment, I tried to feel my legs. I couldn't feel anything. I tried to move my toes. I couldn't feel anything, uh, move anything. I tried to take a first step, and I fell, fell, on, I fell down. And um, so imagine working your whole life. 98-pound wrestler in high school, wanted to be a bodybuilder, having this phenomenal career, the number one Asian bodybuilder in the whole entire planet. I wanted to get on a Flex magazine cover. I got on a Flex magazine cover. I wanted to get on a muscular development cover. I got on a muscular development cover. I want to get on Muscle and Fitness. I got on a, the cover of Muscle and Fitness. I hit the pinnacle in everything that I wanted to do. And here at the end of my road, I end up with a spinal cord injury. What would you guys do at that point? So I was depressed. I was sad. Um, I was like that ostrich putting, putting the head in a hole. You know, that was me. I, I pretty much didn't know what to do at that point. And I decided to start training again start getting myself going. And in 2008, I said, you know what? I'm going to do something that I've never done before. I'm going to challenge myself. I'm going to do a wheelchair bodybuilding competition. And I can honestly tell you guys, it's the hardest thing I've ever done because you got to remember, when you have no legs to brace yourself, you have to, like, when you're on a bench, bench you got to tie yourself with a belt to hold yourself down so you don't fall. You can't get onto a lot of the machines, okay? And then you can't get off and on to change the weight. And I can, I mean, my, my girl that's sitting out there right now, Jill, she's the one, she's my legs. She's the one that was taking all the weight off, putting the weight back on, um, you know, basically um, helping me, spot me. She was doing everything. If I didn't have her, I wouldn't be able to do it. But I decided to come back and challenge myself again. And I competed in the two biggest show on the planet again, the Arnold Classic and the Wheelchair Mr. Olympia. So I took second at the Wheelchair Mr. Olympia and third, I'm um, in third in the Wheelchair Mr. Olympia and second at the Arnold Classic Championship. First time out in the wheelchair bodybuilding competition. So just remember, you guys are gonna go through some crossroad. Um, Things are going to happen to you. You never know. I, I never see myself with the, basically my future being in a wheelchair. Never in my whole entire life. Um, the challenge is real, guys. But at the same time, every one of you guys have challenges that you always have. But the only thing that I can tell you is you've got to be able to figure out how to get over it. Get over it. Get under it. Get around it. Whatever you need to do. But the biggest thing is don't stall yourself because you're, you're going to be like a deer in a headlight. You'll get run over. So fast forward to today, um, I was telling Tamara and uh, uh, Mike, five days ago, I started swelling up. And not like the swole swell. I'm talking about sumo swell. Uh, my face started swelling up, and I didn't know what the heck is going on. You know? I started gaining weight, um, just getting super pudgy within the last five days. But at the same time, I mean, I'll, I'll go back and we'll run some tests and figure out what's going on. But again, it's another journey again that I'm going to have to face. Every one of you guys is going to have to face every journey and it's never going to stop. But the biggest thing what I want you to take away from this is do what you want to do in life because you only live once. And you got to take advantage of every bit of it. And if you want to get on stage and you're afraid to get on stage, get on stage. You know, um, take that fear away from you, whatever it is. Or, you know, you want to do something else and you feel like you're, you're, too, you're too old. It's never too old. You're never too young. You're, no, you're too fat, too skinny, too tall, too whatever, right? We always have our, our, uh, our excuses. But at the end of the day, guys, do what you need to do, do what you love, and uh, love life. All right, guys, God bless.